Uh. Welcome to Breaking Down Bergman. I'm Jenna Castle. And I'm Ryan Lede. And today we're discussing the silence. Ding. So, um, in Sonia and David's video, the, the first thing they talked about was how this... Um, or the silence was the final film in Bergman's trilogy of faith, um, and I guess the other the other films in that trilogy are A Glass Darkly and Winter Light, and we haven't really dis or we haven't seen those videos in um, our film class, um, but like, what did you think about that? In my opinion. I didn't really see a faith correlation with Bergman's film, In the Silence. I didn't really understand that there was a spiritual context until I further read um, books and novels on the movie. Um, so to me, it didn't have a, I guess, overemphasized spiritual theme. But what do you think? Well, I mean, um, I mean, I kind of disagree with what you're saying because when I first saw the film, um, I mean, they don't like explicitly say anything necessarily about religion like Anna and Esther um, but I feel like you can kind of tell that there's struggles that they have with each other and um, I guess just like everything that they're kind of going through I, I think it was Esther the one who's like really sick and the one who like emphasizes the the struggle within their her and Anna's relationship like you can tell that at points, it seems like she might feel like the reason that she's going through all this is because of a lack of faith. Um, like I said, they don't really say anything like specifically about that in the movie, but you know, I remember you know in our class we talked about like what does exactly the silence mean, and you can take it literally like as in uh, there's no like um, what's the word diegetic music. I think that's what I'm yeah. looking for. There's no, like a lot of the film is literally completely silent. Like they talk sometimes very infrequently. I think I read somewhere like the script only has like seventeen hundred words or something like that. So yeah, I mean, literally a lot of the film is silent, but also it could be the silence of other things. Like for instance, the silence of religion and how you know they Anna and Esther both have their vices that they deal with in terms of like sex, you know, Anna is like a very, it seems like a very sexual person. Um, Esther is, de like, you know, smokes and drinks and, you know, she's very sick and, you know, yeah, so like it could be taken as kind of the silence of religion. I think, I think that's one of the things you could talk about. So yeah, I can kind of see it how, see how it could be called a trilogy of faith, or I mean, this could be a part of a movie called the trilogy of faith. So, I mean, yeah, we, like, we haven't seen the other films, but, you know. That's definitely, like, when I was reading um, literature context on this movie, and they were talking more about, like, the silence of religion, like, the silence of God present in their life, like, that definitely made sense and made correlation with me, I guess. I just didn't see it more as a um, emphasized, obvious theme of the movie when I was first watching it. It was more like analyzing it later. I kind of understood that that was a definitely a, one of Bergman's themes throughout the movies. Um, but I could definitely agree with Sonia and David when they were talking about how um, this was definitely like a random movie for Bergman and how um, they kind of claimed it as like a really artistic film with um, being super experimental with the narrative and the storyline. Um, kind of saying that stood apart from Bergman's other films and um, I know that there are specific few few scenes in the movies. Were there any that you thought that definitely set apart this movie as more of an experimental artistic film compared to Bergman's other films in this era, I guess? Well, um, I mean, there are obviously... I mean, we've seen other Bergman films in this class, and this is definitely kind of a... I don't know, a different take or like a different kind of style. Not really style, I guess. But yeah, there's like some kind of some shocking moments. And Sonia and David kind of touched on this about how um, it's a very sexual movie. Like, we're actually showing like nudity. And I don't think we've seen that from another Bergman film that we've seen. So like, we see like a woman's breast on screen and that's kind of shocking for Bergman. And, you know, yeah, like 
there's a scene, it's a scene when Anna is in the theater and she's like, the couple, um, the guy and the girl just start having sex, like, um, in the theater and they don't really care who, like, who's watching them, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, in that sense, it's, it is, it's a very, it's a very, ran it is very random because, I mean, there's that, there's, you know, random scenes with, like, the midget performers and, um, that aren't really explained, like, we see them on stage and they're kind of doing their thing and that's what they're watching in the theater and it's just it's just really bizarre. I think Sonia and David, David used that word and it's a really good word because I don't know, it's just like a lot of things really aren't explained and like we like we see the major performers like performing and then later on they like walk down the hall next to uh, the son, I forgot his name. Joey. Johan and I forgot what exactly takes place there but I don't know. I feel like there should be, I don't know, in, in other Bergman films, like, it kind of seems like it's more just, like, very straightforward, but in this one, there's a lot that's not explained. Another scene that comes to mind is when Johan goes and sees the old man, um, and he, they don't speak the same language, but the old man just, like, immediately starts trying to, like, joke with him or, like, make him laugh, and he has these, like, lettuce and, like, hot dogs or something, and he's, like... I don't know. It was just a really weird scene. Like it was almost kind of sexual too. Like um, there was some. I feel like there was some kind of symbolism going on there. But yeah, I mean, like I totally agree with Sonia and David that this this film isn't as straightforward as other as other uh, Bergman films. And even um, what I keep comparing it to is one of Bergman's other really well known uh, films, *Summer with Monica*. Like they show nudity in that, but it's all. Like, like you said, straightforward. It, you know, she's, Monica's running on the beach, um, nude, oh, yeah. but it's, it's assumed, you know, it's just, everything is super straightforward. You know, they're in a relationship, whereas, mm -hmm. like, in this film, the silence, everything is just kind of like, it happens, and then there's no explanation of it later. Like, mm -hmm. why was that couple having sex in the theater? It never seemed like irrelevant and, mm -hmm. I guess, big part of the storyline. It was just there. And I think Bergman makes a lot of those, I guess big moments in the movie where he just throws things in there um, that can be further analyzed when the movie's wrapped up to mean something different. And going along with what Sonia said, um, she said that this means more than what he's showing. Um, just kind of saying like she believes that everything that Bergman is just showing surface level on his films, especially in the silence, that there is just more underlining context. Um, then I guess is being spoken about and mm -hmm. what do you think about that? Yeah, um, I, I agree like I, I think Bergman is a very I guess the word I'm looking for is kind of a difficult director to to grasp in terms of like what he's trying to portray in his films um, I think that he's very intelligent in what he puts and like he knows exactly what he wants to put in the scene and what he doesn't and not everything he, he isn't surface level, so he's not, he's not, like, I guess most of it, like, all of his films are, pack a lot of depth. Um, but this one was different in that it's just, I don't know, it, it, it wasn't like, they don't explain things as well, I guess, in his other films. It, like, there were a lot of open interpretations to how, like, Anna and Esther's relationship. It's like we know they're sisters and there is absolutely like a sexual tension that's going on between them, but it's never expressed and, and it's, it's never like fully engaged and you're never really given the back like history of that. And so um, I guess it's like, it can be like an audience's interpretation of that. Um, and then another, another thing is like, not only the sexual tension that happens between Anna and Esther, but almost the, not even sexual tension, just like the almost perversive relationship that Anna has with her son. Um, because at the beginning of the film, it starts out, you know, their interaction, it, 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 it seems like a mother, a mother-child relationship, and it seems pretty normal. But then it kind of gets weird when, you know, she calls him into the bathroom while she's taking a bath and asks him, you know, to scrub her back. 
maybe okay so maybe, like at that point you think well maybe maybe that is kind of normal and then it leads into her you know them going into the bedroom her taking off her clothes and her telling him to take off his clothes so that they can both nap together in the same bed and you know everyone that we or you know like when we discussed it in class it was just there was an agreement that like that's not really normal and so um that that relationship too along with a, a lot of other things in this film that um aren't really you know portrayed or explained fully it's just like kind of bizarre and yeah i think that's one thing that um sonia was saying is she believed that at the end of the movie something that was interesting that kind of set apart the silence too was that johan she believes that he didn't learn anything um and that he, just at the end of the movie he's still been abandoned um, it's still kind of confusing what his relationship is with the two women um, in these films. Um, and I know that um, David had said that Bergman usually leaves open endings for interpretation and that this didn't really seem um, that set apart. Um, and But I kind of agree with Sonia. I feel like usually when the Bergman films end, you do feel like you leave with an experience or, you know, like, oh, okay, well... You know, in Summer with Monica, you know, we have the long male gaze of Harry, and it's definitely an open interpretation, but it still kind of wraps up, like, the closure of the storyline that Bergman is trying to tell, where as this movie, it kind of feels like you are still really confused, and mm -hmm. a part of the storyline wasn't finished, I guess. Um, and I feel like there was a ton of things that were... Um, I guess, talked about with um, Johan, and um, I feel like his character wasn't finished. Um, I guess for me, like, his character was didn't have a lot of closure. Um, and film professor from Texas A&M University, Daniel Humphrey, um, says in his novel, and yet although he is obviously fascinated by and drawn to the two women in his life, Johan has a number of unsettling but strangely satisfying encounters with the men he meets while wandering alone through the hotel corridors. Um, and I feel like in uh, this movie, Johan is definitely, there's you know a lot of interpretation and critical analysis about his sexuality throughout the movie. And I feel like at the end of it, you're still not sure and you're still um, wondering if there's any closure or has he learned anything, just like Sonia said. And so... I think that's definitely one of the main things that I took away from breaking down this movie is that um, that we don't necessarily leave with an exact interpretation. It really is open to anything um, that you want to take away from it. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you about the open ending, especially with Johan. Um, but I guess even more with more than Johan, I think that the relationship between Anna and Esther is, is left just totally open ended. Like, um, like I said, like you, you don't really understand the history that's going on there. You don't really understand exactly the relationship that they've had. If something has happened in the past for them to feel like they do towards each other, but especially like Anna and Johan decide to just leave her there and you know in this foreign country and she's basically it seems like she's dying and. You know they um, they they don't they don't even really say goodbye. It's very very strange, and um, it seems like this film was just kind of a guess as to what was really taking place. And um, yeah, so I, I definitely agree with you about like Johan being an an undeveloped character. I mean, he's developed, I guess, but he's not. He was he wasn't really fully developed. Like you don't really understand the thing what's going on there, you know, and you also don't understand what's going on with Anna, Anna and Esther, and it's never fully explained. And it, it absolutely it's almost like the uh, the way that Johan and Anna leave Esther. It's like Bergman just kind of leaves us, you know, with nothing after this film is over. And it's just, I mean, it it's it's. It, it's it causes a lot of good conversation about it, but it's it's also very almost frustrating because it's like it's we're guessing as to what really is taking place. We're guessing as to why there was sexual tension between them. We're guessing as to why Johan had these like really weird encounters with like different men throughout the hotel. And so, 
yeah, it's re- I guess it was just really interesting in that way. I think this film definitely was what brought attention to him as a director instead of focusing on his movies. Everyone kind of wanted to know what was Bergman's thought on this. Like, why did he throw in this line or this character or this scene? It wasn't more about focused on, you know, the, um, I guess, obs- the storyline or the movie context in general. It was more about Bergman. Um, and so I feel like this movie definitely brought him a lot of credibility, whether positive or negative, depending on how people view this movie. It definitely brought him a lot of attention in the film industry at this time. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. Breaking down Bergman. Sonia and David, hope you enjoy this. And Gig em. we enjoy your videos. Thanks and gig. Rob the jewelry store and tell him make me a grip. <laughs> Oh my god, there's no hope.